Light that spark fire nation, JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like The Shake Up. Today, we'll be focusing on how to use a published book as a marketing tool to grow your business. To drop these value bombs, I have brought JJ Hebert into EO Fire Studios. JJ is the nine-time award-winning author of four number one Amazon bestsellers. He is also the founder of Mind Stir Media, a top-ranked self-publishing company partnered with Shark Tank's Kevin Harrington and Marielle Hemingway. JJ has appeared in major publications such as Forbes, Entrepreneur Inc., Business Insider, and Yahoo Finance, amongst others. And he's a writer for Entrepreneur Magazine and a member of the Forbes Business Council as well. And today, Fire Nation, we'll talk about how to even begin writing a business book. If you struggle with time, we've got some answers for you. We'll talk about self-publishing versus traditional publishing, building a brand, and the best book marketing methods and so much more when we get back from thinking our sponsors. The HubSpot Podcast Network is the audio destination for business professionals who seek the best education and inspiration on how to grow a business. Whether you're looking for marketing, sales, service, or operational guidance, the HubSpot Podcast Network hosts have your back. Listen, learn, and grow with the HubSpot Podcast Network at hubspot.com slash podcast network. In today's on-demand digital world, our ideal customers have more good content and products to choose from every hour than they could consume in a lifetime. Being good is no longer good enough. The solution, passion marketing. Download your free passion marketing ebook to learn how to become a top priority for your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. JJ, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something that you believe about becoming successful that most people disagree with. So for me, um, the biggest consideration, I think, is the fact that you have to be willing to sacrifice. Um, For me, you know, early on in the days of Mindster Media, the company that I founded, um, you know, the, the success of Mindster Media really, really came from, originated from the success of my own my own book that I had been writing, and so I, I was working in corporate America, uh, was miserable, and um, you know one of the things that I that I did early on was I you know was willing to stay up until four or five a.m. writing my book and and putting in the time and really uh, really sacrifice a lot of sleep early on. I think a lot of entrepreneurs can relate to that. Um, so I think you have to be willing to sacrifice something, uh, whether it's you know sleep, or time in general, money, uh, relationships, even. Although I don't recommend that, but I think you know sacrifice is key. So JJ, I recently and personally wrote a book, my first traditionally published book, and I get a lot of questions now from people saying, John, like I've written a, um, I'm interested in writing a book. I've seen that you that you wrote one. Like, where do I even begin? How does one even begin? to start writing a business book? And frankly, I don't really have great answers, but you're kind of the expert on this topic. So how does one even begin to write a business book? A good starting point is, you know, coming up with a topic first and foremost. Um, I think that's that's fairly uh, self-explanatory. So, you know, if you're if you are a leadership guru or you're a consultant, some sort of consultant, you know, write on the topics that you that you know. Um, and but beyond that, you know, um, you know, choose a choose a unique and and uh, you know self explanatory you know title and subtitle. Um, you know, once you have that topic nailed down, the title is incredibly important. Um, and if you can if you can add some of your your topics keywords into the title or subtitle, I think that's key as well uh, to kind of allow. Um, SEO to kick in, especially within um, Amazon's algorithms or website. Um, so let's just say you're writing, you know, a book on leadership. If you can include the word leadership in your title or subtitle, um, that can do that can do wonders for uh, for visibility on platforms like Amazon. Um, you know, author John C. Maxwell is a master of writing um, effective book titles and subtitles. Uh, one of one great example or prime example is his book. Uh, the five levels of leadership, proven steps to maximize your potential. So he actually included the word leadership in his book title, um, and I'm sure that was strategic. Uh, so the book title is definitely important. Um, and you know, number two for me is always you know creating a stringent outline and remaining faithful to it. Um, you know, you can't just go into a book and wing it. You have to have a plan. 
Um, so, you know, an outline can become your best friend during your writing journey. Um, and, you know, writer's block is something that you hear about a lot, you know, when it comes to writing. Um, but I think writer's block for me is just a sign of poor preparation. I think if you have an outline, you, you'll be able to avoid writer's block altogether. Um, so for, uh, you know, an outline for me is a chapter by chapter outline. You know, I'll really, really dig into, um, you know, the the point of each chapter, you know, what 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 am I what am I trying to get across in each chapter and just kind of pinpoint in advance. Um, that way, when you do sit down to write, you'll know exactly where you're where you're heading. Um, and then the third the third key to writing a, uh, a business book, in my mind, is designing a writing schedule uh, that makes sense for you and it needs to be attainable. Um, so for me, I always try to set it some sort of daily time goal or page count goal. Maybe I'll set aside two or three hours a night. Maybe I'll aim for, you know, five or 10 pages. You know, it really is, it's up to you. And, you know, early on, you're not going to have, um, a great feel for what your goal should be. It really will grow organically. Um, but I do recommend probably a time goal initially just to get a feel for, um, you know, how many chapters or how many pages you're able to write within a certain period of time, and then just try to stick with that and be consistent. Fire Nation, a lot of value bombs dropped here. A lot of good things that you can really kind of identify where you may be lacking with your goal of writing a book. I mean, I really love that talk about the title and the tagline. I mean, the clear, the conciseness. And then of course, if you could add in a little cleverness while not taking away from your clearness and conciseness, always something to think about. That outline, so key, so critical. Like when I sat down and wrote out the 17 steps of the 17 step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment, which was my tagline, I said, there's my outline. Those are the 17 chapters. Those are the 17 steps I'm going to go through. And so because of that, I had zero writer's block because I knew exactly where I was going every step of the way before I even wrote one word in the actual book beyond that outline. And then having that writing schedule, like for me, like writing was something that I wasn't going to do if I just left it up to chance, but I committed the first two hours of every day for eight months was going to be writing and writing alone and that equaled 480 hours in eight months, and I finished the book 71,000 words. So these are very key things when you're setting off to write a business book. Now, everybody struggles with time on some levels, JJ. So if Fire Nation, our listeners are struggling with time right now, what are your recommendations for them? You know, I think ghostwriting is something you could consider, although it is somewhat pricey, you know, for for someone trying to break into the business book scene, um, put a business book out there, um, hiring a ghostwriter, which is basically a professional writer who will be writing on on your behalf, um, sometimes the way to go. I know a lot of um, well-known entrepreneurs go this route. Um, you can expect to pay usually between like 25k and 100k for for you know a professional ghostwriter with a proven track record. The hundred thousand dollar you know. Uh, range would be more, you know, like a New York Times bestselling uh, ghostwriter. Um, and the 25K would be, I wouldn't say bottom of the line, but certainly, you know, you're not looking at it, you know, someone with New York Times bestseller status or anything like that. But um, ghostwriting is something that you could definitely look into. And there's a plethora of options out there for, for ghostwriting services. Um, but even beyond that, an anthology is something that you can also look into. I'm actually creating an anthology right now with Shark Tank's Kevin Harrington. He's one of my partners at Mindster Media, my company. And what we're doing with the, the business anthology is we're allowing a um, you know about 30 different um, contributors. So each contributor or participant will, will add um, one chapter to the book. So it's kind of like a shortcut. So you could actually be part of a business book without writing an entire book. So that's a major perk with being involved in an anthology is, you know, you're just on the hook for one chapter, it could be like 1500 to, you know, 2000 words. So it's kind of like a blog post. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, it's businessanthology.com. We'll take you right to the, um, right to the offering there. So we're, Kevin and I are really excited about that anthology because, um, you know, it's, it's an alternative to writing, like I said, an entire business book. It's an alternative to hiring, you know, a ghostwriter and spending 25K to 100K to work with a professional. So um, those are the two routes that I would recommend if you don't have the time. 
So Fire Nation, I will say there's nothing against going the ghostwriter route. I mean, I personally was really thinking about it. I actually chatted with four different ghostwriters, um, very different personalities, very different writing styles, and I enjoyed all my conversations with them, and I was all collecting information. At the end of the day, I decided this was a book I wanted to write, and so I did commit to the time of doing it. But a ghostwriting route, if you have the outline, if you have the knowledge and you're going to put your blood, sweat and tears into promoting and marketing the crap out of it, it is the way to get your message out to the world. Then go that route if that's the only route that you have. And it can always, of course, be a great route because maybe these ghostwriters have better writing skills than you would have for any number of reasons. And so they're going to be able to take your outline, your words, your thoughts and put it into paper in a more eloquent and readable way. Now, there's always so many debates around self-publishing versus traditional publishing. I've actually done both now. What are your thoughts on these, JJ? I'm definitely biased because I own a self-publishing company, but I can tell you that I've been down both both roads. I had an agent um, at one point for about six months, and this was around the time of the Great Recession. So, um, you know, a lot of these traditional publishers weren't really taking on many, many uh, new authors. So I ended up self-publishing back in 2009. I sold over 100,000 copies of my debut novel, Unconventional. Um, and I did, did that all myself. Most of the copies were sold on Amazon. Um, and this was around the time when um, Kindle was fairly new. Um, and so I can tell you that with self-publishing, from my perspective, uh, one of the benefits that I really really enjoy with self-publishing is that there's a guarantee that your book will, will be published. Uh, whereas with traditional publishing, usually you have to go through a literary agent. Um, sometimes it's just as hard to, you know, find an agent to represent you as, you know, as it is landing an actual traditional book deal. Um, but, you know, you can expect probably about, you know, a one to two year time frame with most traditionally published books, whereas self-publishing you're looking at, you know, about you know, three months or so with our company. And that's, that's with all, you know, full service uh, VIP treatment. So, um, so, you know, definitely the guarantee, you know, to be published, the speed to market is important. Um, and, you know, you can, with self-publishing, you can definitely get to the market much faster. Um, and then, you know, keeping control over your book. Um, that's also crucial for, for most authors, especially business book authors who are usually tying their content to their business. They don't really want a traditional publisher to swoop in and make all sorts of changes. So if you do get a traditional deal, make sure there's some sort of clause in the contract that allows you to keep some sort of control over the content. But often, more often than not, self-publishing is the way to go um, in that regard. And then, you know, also royalties are a consideration. You know, with self-publishing, you're able to keep a much larger percentage of royalties than you would uh, with a traditional publisher, usually like 85 to 90 percent. Uh, royalties when it comes to, um, you know, self-publishing, whereas, you know, traditional, you might be getting, you know, five to 15 percent. And then if you have an agent, sometimes you have to share uh, the royalties with your agent as well. So I think those are some key considerations. If you if you're looking at this, you know, um, you know, self-publish versus traditional publishing debate. Fire Nation, there's always going to be a debate. There's definitely pros and cons to both sides. You just need to add up your pros and then weigh them against the cons and then make the decision that is best for yourself. And we have a lot of great things coming up, talking about building a brand. We're going to be talking about the best book marketing methods when we get back from thanking our sponsors. With 3,600 hours of content on Netflix, 850,000 active podcasts with 48 million episodes, 350 million products available just on Amazon, and 30,000 hours of new content published on YouTube every hour, our ideal customers have more good content and products to choose from than they could ever consume in a lifetime. But being good is no longer good enough. And this is where passion marketing comes into play. We must become a top priority for our ideal customers. It's really quite simple. We need to identify the highest passions of our ideal customers and then build our businesses around those passions. Today's sponsor, Nathan Gwilliam, is a serial entrepreneur who has built and sold businesses using passion marketing and has helped many other companies with their passion marketing. For example, he helped one company reach 40 million monthly social comments, likes, and shares using passion marketing. He's the host of the Monetization Nation blog and podcast, has given a TEDx talk on passion marketing, and even created an ebook about passion marketing. And you can download the free ebook right now at passionmarketing.com. That's passionmarketing.com. 
Your content and branding speak volumes about your business, but it's not always easy to whip up beautiful, polished, on-brand landing pages, documents, quotes, and more for your prospects and customers, especially when you're not the marketing expert in your business. But that changes today. With HubSpot's CRM platform, you can create a shared library of marketing-approved content, ensuring everyone in your company can get the right content out to the right people anytime, and from anywhere. Whether you're looking to create landing pages that align with key sales plays, documents with already approved sales assets, or quotes and proposals you can send to customers in seconds, HubSpot's CRM platform has you covered. You can even collect e-signatures and receive payment via Stripe. Having content tools as a foundational aspect of your CRM platform just makes sense, and with HubSpot, you do. Learn more about how you can scale your company without scaling complexity at HubSpot.com. That's HubSpot.com. So JJ, Fire Nation knows this. Building a brand is key, but it's difficult. How can we use a book to help? How can we use a book to build and grow our brand? Creating a, a business book can be key in terms of gaining you know, credibility or becoming a trusted expert. I think it's one of the... Um, one of the best ways to to gain expertise in your in your market or your field, um, and to be referred as an expert, referred to as an expert, and um, so I think the the credibility play is huge when it comes to growing your brand through a book. Um, sometimes just having that book in hand, you know, almost like as a um, a business card on steroids, if you will, can make can make all the difference, you know, in terms of getting, you know, a higher higher paid clients or maybe attracting more media coverage. But even beyond that, you can use a book to generate leads and sales for your business. And that's that's not not something to sleep on either. I mean, a lot of business book authors are including, you know, links back to their lead magnet or you know their website. Uh, and in fact, that's something that we're doing with the anthology that I mentioned earlier. Um, at businessanthology.com, you know, if you sign up there, um, you know, we'll actually allow you to include a link back to your lead magnet in the chapter that you're that you're involved in, and you can do the same thing for a full length book as well. You can you can link back to uh, even more than one lead magnet, you know. Um, so if you want to, you know, get get some of these readers into your sales funnels, that's that's another way to do it. Um, and then also something else to consider is you know speaking gigs. You know, a lot of a lot of companies or, or organizations looking to book, you know, speakers for their next big event, they're looking for experts. And if you can lead in with your pitch, you know, as a best-selling author or even just as a published author, um, sometimes that actually puts you ahead of, of your competition. And so I think those are some things you can definitely look at in terms of growing your brand with a book. So maybe let's talk a little bit specific about either yourself or maybe one of your past clients or just somebody that you've seen do this really well, building a brand using their book. Give us one mm -hmm. specific example. Yeah, so we had a gal um, who teaches Italian um, online and she wanted to create a book that she could use um, to basically you know, drive traffic back to her YouTube page and back to, back to her website. So she created this um, Italian guide, if you will, and um, it's actually a beautiful guide. She actually did. Um, there was actually some some handwritten um, Italian in there as well, and um, the book came out beautifully. And she is able to use use the book, like I said, to drive traffic to her website, to her YouTube page. And so there's a lot of cross promotion that's happened there. Um, we also have another author who. Um, wrote about, uh, she's actually a, a renowned um, uh, individual when it comes to um, health and wellness. Her name is Cindy Clement, and she um, she wrote a book on that very topic uh, about some of the, the toxins that we allow into our body, whether it's through food or through the air or through, you know, various methods. And so she wrote on that topic and used that to launch her, her speaking career. Um, she's done really well with that. And her book became a number one Amazon bestseller as well. So, you know, there, there are a couple examples there, but you know, there are numerous, numerous examples. So another thing I want to talk about are the best book marketing methods. I mean, again, we're going to be focusing mostly on the self-publishing because that's your area of expertise, but that is one thing that when you're self-publishing, it's on you, Fire Nation. Like you are the book launch marketing manager. Like this is what you need to be focusing on to get your book out to the world. So what are some of the best marketing methods that you've seen for self-publishers? 
having an author website is key. You need to have a home a home base, if you will. Um, and you can all, you can set it up so that you have, like I mentioned, lead lead magnets on your website, so or opt in forms. So you should offer some sort of value in return or in exchange for contact information. So maybe you're giving away some sort of uh, free report or something that relates to your book. You should have that author website and uh, lead magnet set up well before your book is even available, and you should be testing it. Um, that way, when you do write your book and you and you implement, you know, that lead magnet in your book, you already know that the lead magnet works. You should also have a um, email marketing set up, email marketing campaign set up around that lead magnet. So when people opt in, you know, they're getting a series of, of, of auto, automated emails. You can use, you know, something like aweber.com or even Constant Contact or MailChimp to set up uh, an email marketing campaign. And they'll, you know that that'll trigger uh, automated emails, a series of emails once someone signs up for for that report or whatever you're offering for free in exchange for information. So the author website's key. The email marketing, setting up that you know the lead magnet and sales funnel is key. Beyond that, you can use social media to drive an incredible amount of traffic back to your website. Um, I mean, I use Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Twitter ads. <laughs> Uh, LinkedIn ads, and obviously I, I rely a little bit on the organic side of things too. But you know, be ready to spend some money on social media ads, in particular, to drive traffic back to your website, back to your your uh, your offer, your lead magnet on your website. And once you get those people, you know, signing up um, or opting in on your website, you can email them basically in perpetuity. You know, unless of course they uns unsubscribe. But um, you know, having having your own list is key and you can use social media to create that list uh, by driving traffic to your your lead uh, magnet um, and then you know some other considerations obviously podcasts are <laughs> are huge um, i wouldn't be on one if i didn't believe in in the power of podcasts um, and obviously you can reach a large amount of people in a very short span of time um, but then you know creating your own your own opportunities i think are are, are key too i think some authors forget that you can you can, you know, you can hustle just like, uh, just like you would at the beginning of, of of your business, and you know, you can contact some of your local news outlets. You can um, contact book bloggers. There's all sorts of uh, book blogger lists on uh, on Google. If you just if you just Google book bloggers, you'll see probably millions of results. But you can also go on to websites like go um, Goodreads.com, G-O-O-D-R-E-A-D-S.com. And that's owned by Amazon. It's a social network for book lovers. So it's kind of like Facebook, but everyone on the website loves books. So goodreads.com is something that I've spent a lot of time on and I would recommend. And you can also offer uh, giveaways through Goodreads and giveaways just in general are a great way to generate um, exposure. Uh, and you can also, you know, offer a giveaway and and ask that uh, the people who win win or receive the book write a you know review on Amazon. Um, so yeah, I mean, hustle is definitely something that you'll need to you'll need to do. Um, just like with any you know new business venture, I mean, you're starting from from scratch. You're creating your author brand. So, um, you know, I think I think that covers it fairly well. You are going to have to hustle Fire Nation. I mean, again, going through some of the things that JJ talked about, author websites, key, having a place to drive people, ads. We found some definite success with Amazon ads as well, which is really interesting to see. Uh, podcasts. I mean, I was on 345 podcasts and shows like I like Instagram lives and Facebook lives in 75 days promoting the book. Like that is something that I just over committed to because I knew the effectiveness of it. You can do different giveaways. Uh, JJ mentioned goodreads.com. Something that I think um, you need to think about if you have a real specific, an amazing solution to a real problem with your book, go to different Q&A sites like Quora.com and some other Q&A sites where people are asking questions that your book has the answer to. And then you can give the best definitive answer. It'll get upvoted and it will be there for all time being like this constant lead magnet for your book. So JJ, you shared a lot of value bombs, brother. Give us the one key takeaway that you want to make sure Fire Nation really gets from our chat today. Any call to action you have for our listeners, share it now and then we'll say goodbye. There's a lot of value, like I said earlier, in joining an anthology if you're looking to become a published author. 
without having to write an entire book. Uh, you can go to businessanthology.com and sign up. Um, but outside of that, certainly go to mindstermedia.com and you can download a, a free publishing guide where we outline our entire process and show you all the different packages that we offer. And we are partnered with Shark Tank's Kevin Harrington, so you're in good hands and hope to, hope to see you soon. Fire Nation, take these calls to action. Make sure that you are listening, learning, consuming the content in the areas that you need help with from the experts. And I know, Fire Nation, that you know that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with JJ and JLD today, so please keep up that heat and head over to eofire.com and just type JJ in the search bar and his show notes page will pop up with everything that we talked about here today. And JJ, I want to say thank you, brother, for sharing your truth, your knowledge, your value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, John. Hey, Fire Nation, today's value bomb content was brought to you by JJ. And Fire Nation, if you've ever thought about creating a podcast of your own, the podcast journal is for you. It is gorgeous, it is full leather, and it will guide you step-by-step in the creation and the launch of your podcast in 50 days. Visit thepodcastjournal.com. Use promo code podcast for a $15 discount as a thank you for listening to my podcast, and I will catch you there or on the flippity flip side. The HubSpot Podcast Network is the audio destination for business professionals who seek the best education and inspiration on how to grow a business. Whether you're looking for marketing, sales, service, or operational guidance, the HubSpot Podcast Network hosts have your back. Listen, learn, and grow with the HubSpot Podcast Network at hubspot.com slash podcast network. In today's on-demand digital world, our ideal customers have more good content and products to choose from every hour than they could consume in a lifetime. Being good is no longer good enough. The solution, passion marketing. Download your free passion marketing ebook to learn how to become a top priority for your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com.